goes, he goes, Timmy, we're not going to haul um, stone crab traps today. He says, buddy, we're going to go offshore and unload a pot boat from Columbia later on tonight. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Tim McBride. What's up, Tim? Hi, man. Good. <laughs> How just you been? Out, man. Down, here, down here in Florida, beating the heat. No, no hurricanes yet, huh? No, thank God. You know, I mean, uh, you know, they just get worse every year because, you know, we're really fucking this, climb, this, this planet up, man, big time, our you know, our progenitors, you know, put us on the threshold of, you know, what we're, what we're seeing right now. So you know, it's kind of a bitch, but you know, um, all you can do for now is take it in stride, man. You know, so deal with the hot days. Definitely. So I want you to take me back to when you were doing this. I want you to walk me through a day when you would be going to handle business when you wake up in the morning, what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what I can do is begin by the very first time I ever got involved in this. You know, the first time I ever saw a boat, you know, like the one that's being shown right there, you know, behind us here. Yeah. Uh, which is very cool. Um, that looks like a, a either a long line or a trawler. It's not a shrimp boat because there's no nets out there, but um, definitely uh a, a deep hauled vessel you can tell by the way it's bass section is and the way it's sitting but uh anyways yeah no i was uh you know i had moved down here you know from la i went back to wisconsin for a little bit where i went where i did my high school years i grew up in, in north carolina and my best buddy at that time when i finally went back home you know from from being out in la he calls me that next day i was there he says he goes dude i'm moving to florida you know tomorrow he says i'm gonna drive down and go to work on a, on a fishing boat, a crab boat, you know, pull stone crab traps. And I didn't know. Well, I knew what it was because I had done before I had taken a drive down there just over the summer, you know, and I went out on a boat and that, you know, but didn't really, you know, get the grasp of what it was. I was really, you know, looking at, cause I was just a kid. And uh, he said, did you want to go? And I said, you know, hell yeah, man. So I just packed all my shit, my Mustang and off we went and wound up, you know, a couple of days later at the dead end of highway 29 down here in, in the Everglades and um, highway, the highway dead ends on a little tiny island, 139 acre little slice of paradise called um, Chukalucky Island. And um, the island that you uh, you have to go over to get to the causeway to get to Chukalucky, that's Everglades City. So between the two islands, they create this town, Everglades City, with a population of um, just under 400 people. And even still today, it's, it's not much more than that, right around 500 people. Um, simply because, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of old time families and a lot of, you know, and, and people like that. Plus, you know, they're, they're not making any more islands. So there really isn't much, you know, uh, no more space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no space to put any more shit. We, you know, wherever you can put some shit, there's probably some shit there by now, you know, which is too bad because back in, you know, I was growing up and around on the island, there were still areas on, you know, on Chuckleski Island where you know, that, um, you know, were wooded. You can walk through a stretch of woods just to get to the other side of the island. And he, you know, the typical beach or the, you know, island attire or accoutrement, if you will, was, you know, a pair of cutoff jeans and, you know, and bare feet. And that's just how, and we got, that's how we got around bicycle or, or um, golf cart, you know, or you walked, you know, because it was less than a football field across the island, you know, to anybody's house you wanted to go to. But, um, we had got down there and he was, you know, ready to work on the boat. And I, I, I began by, um, you know, I didn't really originally have a job on the boat up and his brother and sister-in-law who were the reason why we moved, uh, he moved down because they ran the only fish house on the Island at the time, his sister and brother-in-law. So the brother-in-law was a native, knew everybody he grew up around here. So when we showed up out of town, you know, from, you know, from Bumbuck, where, you know, um, they were from. Yeah. Nobody questioned us. Nobody questioned our integrity or our background or, you know, like these are cops. These guys are young cops are trying to, you know, get in here or some shit. You know, it was never that we were never looked on them upon that other way because of our where we came from. And was it easily known, though, that they were doing something uh, shady? Well, well, no, you know what? I mean, there was what what it was, was is, you know, you hear a lot of um, you hear a lot of the talk. You know, and every now and then somebody mentioned pot hauling or just stuff like that. But, you know, until you actually see it for yourself, I mean, it's just stories, yeah. you know, 
stories about, you know, ghost stories about, you know, these guys, you know, home, you know, like that, but I never really paying much attention to it, you know, um, because that's all it was at that time. You know I mean? It wasn't like just flagrantly everybody in town knew, you know, because that was one of the greatest things about the story that I told was, you know, them being able to keep this under wraps for as many years and as many generations as they did. But, you know, we'll, we'll pass that, you know, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit in a while, but, um, uh, for right now sake, um, you know, I was, when I came down to, to help his sister and brother-in-law finish completing building their new home on the Island. So when the house was finished, the captain of the boat that my buddy was working with decided that he didn't like this other guy that was working with him because he didn't really know him. It was like from Michigan or some shit like that. But, um, and that's, up, you know, trust and knowing people and the kind of, you know, working on a boat like that, you know, in particular, Billy wanting, Billy, captain, you know, of the boat, wanted to get back in, obviously get back in a pothole and, you know, which I discovered later on, but didn't trust this guy, but wanted, now that I was available, they, you know, and, and stone crabbing is, is, you know, it's a bust ass work, man. I mean, it'll make a fucking man out of you. You know, it's some guys and it's, it's, it's a, the turnover is fantastic because a lot of guys will work maybe, you know, a half a season. It's a lot of guys would only get through a half a season and they just bah, quit. And they won't even come back, you know, and cap, captain's always looking for good guys, you know, and strong backs to work, you know, because, you know, it's, it's, it's pulling steady, pulling these, these fucking traps and, you know, and oh, I'll wow. send you along, I'll send you along some pictures you put up, you know, what, yeah. what these traps look like. You know, and they're, you know, and they're not all that big. You're, you know, they're maybe 20 inches wide by, you know, maybe 24 inches deep by maybe, you know, 19 inches tall or like that. And they'd have a wooden, you know, um, lid that you could, you know, just open like this. And we, we were taking um, tires, um, radial tires and cutting little strips, cutting them into little strips and nailing them on the boards and using them as hinges, you know, to open and close the boards on top of the trap. Yeah. And then two other smaller little pieces of wood just nailed in that you could turn them as a latch like that. So you turn the latch, open it, and you reach in and grab the crabs and just throw them out like that. So the traps are about 50 pounds or so a piece because the bottom six inches of the trap is, is full of concrete. Because <laughs> when you pull that, when you push that fucker overboard, it's got to land on the bottom flat like this. Because the, the only way for them to get into the trap is through the funnel on top. So you have to weight that thing enough. So when you throw it, when you pitch it off, you know, I mean, just shove it off the back of the boat. It's got to land like that perfectly. Yeah. You know, what if it lands so, upside down? And how do you know if it's... Well, it, won't land. it won't because, I mean, you got, you know, you, you've got 45 pounds of concrete in the bottom of this damn thing. It's going to land bottom down, you know, and they always do. I mean, I mean, they turn, you, as soon as you shove them in there, that concrete's, I mean, bang, they hit the bottom just like that yeah yeah but uh the way we lay them out you know and and we got good enough to the point where after the first couple of you know season or so we were we were pulling about 600 we about i'm not gonna say about we pulled 600 traps a day um and um that's a I lot could send you along up some pictures of, pictures of what the best stern of a vessel like that looks like and it's done you know in a similar fashion as to how the guys on um deadliest catch if you've ever seen this show um how they how they pull their traps in now this by no means any comparison i'm not trying to make a comparison by any means because those fucking guys i would you could pay me enough to do that fucking job yeah that's <laughs> a little uh extreme you know, their job <laughs> a little yeah while. that's extreme and it's fucking cold you know and you know and our our season is through the winter months it's cold enough as it is was there an arm on your boat or no 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 okay there's a um, the only arm that's sticking out is is a bit of a boost that goes up and goes over and had a block and tackle attached to the end of it this is you know, this kind of like it that's a shrimp boat. You can tell by the by the rigging and the netting off the side of the boat. And they'll, and they'll drag these big nets off both sides of the boat. They'll drag those through the water for hours, for hours on end. And they're just scooping up, scooping is up. It? See, it, now that is, yeah, that is more closer to a crab boat right there. Because you can see what they've got stacked on the back there. Now those look like those don't look like regular um, crab traps. There's some other kind of trap. They may be for um, 
somewhere up in the northern north northwest or somewhere like that. They they but they catch those the round dungeness crabs, and a lot of those round. I think those traps are round, and that's what those look like. But it's very similar. I mean, I, I have a the, picture of one. I have a picture of one. You have a picture of a stone crab vessel. No, Let's I have see. another one coming up. Okay. I, uh, I I typed in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> More like this. That's exactly it. Right okay. there. Exactly. And you see the guy standing on the stern. Now those are the two guys that are working right side and left side. And you see the padding on the back of the boat. You see those two marks on the back of the boat on the stern and the very back. Those when you pull the trap up, um, and I think you can see just barely over the guy, the, the guy more toward the stern. You see over his shoulder that little piece of arm, that metal piece sticking out. It looks like mm -hmm. a window building in the back, but it's actually a bar sticking out. That would have a block and tackle sitting, um, tied or, you know, on the end of it swinging. So when what they do is that boat would one man on one side of the stern, one guy on the other side of the stern, and each of them have now when when I when I relate this to the the show the ladies catch, they have that um when they throw their grapple hook. I mean they're using two big bags. This, yeah. This is the tackle, yeah. right? The block that they pull up this the things with. This is a yeah. This is a smaller version of of a of, of a crab boat. This is a this is a one man version of it. Yeah. This is yeah exactly. Um, and um, but ours our boats are a lot bigger. Like we see the boats in the background a little bit bigger I like that. One. And you, one when right you have uh, twin pullers on the stern, you have a guy on the port stern and a guy on the starboard stern. And what happens is um, they're, yeah, now, okay, now what they're fishing, that's perfect. Um, that's a typical crab boat, but what they're doing, what they have on board right there are lobster traps. They're going down to the bay to fish lobster in the Florida Bay. The reason I know that is because of the size of the trap. And, um, the, but still, you use have, all kinds of different boats over the years, oh, right? Yeah, you know, uh, these, that's a stone crab vessel. As well as a, as as well as a lobster vessel because ours doubled as stone crab during the summer. Um, stone crab season is only from October fifteenth to May fifteenth, and then from from that point on through the summer when you're not working and preparing your traps, your stone crab traps for the next season, you're taking those things down to the Florida Bay, which is only you know an eighty mile trip down there. We had a, we only had a thousand of these, and we put those out, and we catch lobster. Florida lobster, crawfish, we call them, during the summer times. And we'd go down maybe every, every two weeks, you know, and pull them twice a month like that. They would soak like that. But that was always a fun trip, you know, just to do that. But, yes, yeah, this is the type of vessel. And you can see on the stern, you see that middle thing um, that, yeah, with the rounded right, edges on the right top, here. rounded corners. Right that, yeah, exactly. That piece right there. That's what um, – that's uh, a, a newer version of um, – that just started coming into style, you know, as we were phasing out these, you know, the new generations and stuff are using these newer techniques and stuff like that. The trap would actually hit the back of that when you, when you pull it onto the boat, you'll see uh, the block and tackle hanging just above it. Um, the, the trap would hit the back of that and it would come up and that thing would lay down and the trap would slide up right in front of the guy. So it was right on that table in front of him. Now ours would be the block and tackles hanging there the trap would come up and hang from that. We would pull it in and and release it and let it sit on the stern. The stern being just where that guy's hip is. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. The next, I mean, the the next step and the easiest thing about the whole thing is, you know, the um, when my buddy's pulling a trap, I'm pushing one off. Now when he's now he's got one on board. We're motoring, captain's motoring up to the next trap that's in the line. They're about maybe 30 yards apart. So he has between the time he picks his trap up until we get to the next buoy to get his open, clear the crab out of it, rebate it, clean the funnels, clean the barticles off of it and shut it and clean it, you know, take any knots out of the rope, repair any boards or anything needs to happen to it. So when I grab my buoy to pull my trap in, he's pushing his over. So, so it's every kind time of like in unison, up, drop. it's in unison. Yeah, picking up pick, these drops. I get one, he drops one in its place. So there's always one put back where the other one's picked up from. Yeah, and and 
that we would pull we would pull half the line, 300 traps. And typically that would run half a, a half a line would run anywhere from 70 to 20 miles to you get to the end buoy. You, we couldn't wait to see that end when that buoy with the stick in the end of it, you know, and we're not using the great big giant bags like they do on those commercial big giant commercials. We're using a styrofoam about the size of a, so, a soccer ball that has our number melted into it, you know, that we can tell that's ours. People steal these um, traps and things but, and do things like that out there happen. No, actually, there were um, people who respected that even in those days, you know, because um, you get your ass shot, somebody will shoot you, you know, and it's and it's highly illegal, by the way, if you do caught, you know, with your hand in somebody's traps, man, I mean, they're going to take your boat, they'll take your license, they'll take your, you know, everything from you. I mean, it's, and it should be because this is a living that we're all trying to make out there. And it's tough yeah. enough work as it is. Man. I mean, like I said, look at all these fucking traps in this thing, man. That's a lot. And there's probably, what am I looking at? There's probably 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. There's probably three, maybe 200 of those large, 300 of those large traps on there. And those fuckers weigh. You know, and then we have to take those out and throw those in the same pattern, you know, same back and forth pattern, and then go back around the next day. And then you, those we can pull, you know, and those sort of things. But more to the point, this is the scenario that was imparted to me about how the boat works. And, you know, you get up early in the morning, like three or four in the morning. And, and, uh, but do they tell you you're going to be smuggling pot? Like, do they no, come out no, and tell you? Didn't say, a, didn't say a word. You know, so they just, you know, they said, okay, okay, Timmy's coming to come to work on the boat. So I said, yeah, all right, cool, man. He goes, well, they, after they explain this, you know, you wake up like first thing at first light and you can first see in the morning, you wake up and, you know, as soon as you can start to see that first buoy and you start pulling because, I mean, you got some fucking work to do, man. You got a lot of shit, a lot of traps to get through. And it's not always just breezing through one to the other, dude. I mean, you got weather, you got seas, you got, I mean, it doesn't make any difference what the weather's doing. You're pulling them fucking traps. You know, I've been out there on days where, you know, we have some traps on shore and in, in, in deep in shallow water and then some that are spread out offshore in a little bit deeper water and areas because we had uh, at one point, you know, when we got into this 6,000 traps, just our one boat, like that boat you see behind you, 6,000 stone crab traps. We had 610 different spots throughout the Gulf. We would go to each day a different spot. Come back around and start over again. And, and that's you get, every day. You don't take no days off. We take well, yeah, Saturday and Sundays, like every other day, we're five days straight. Then we take it, you know, two days off. Sometimes we work Saturday, you know, it it, it just depends. And then um um but the thing of it is is if you pull, you know, your first 15 traps or so and the captain decides he doesn't like what's coming out of the traps, he'll turn back and yell, pick them up. And then he'll turn around and go back to that first one. And now you're picking them up. Now you're coiling ropes. Now you're clearing them out again. You rebate them, put the rope inside the trap, and you carry it back there to the back to see the back of the wheelhouse. You can barely see it around the traps. Yeah, yeah. You carry this there. trap from where that guy's standing all the way to the back, and you start stacking these fuckers on there. One guy after the other, stack and put us on a stack, go get another one, stack it. And then you, you tell you got all 600 of them fuckers on there. Captain goes somewhere where he thinks, you know, okay, this looks like good Bob. Let's try this. Throw him off again. You know, now that's a day's fucking work. But besides all of that, this is how the scenario was imparted. As soon as the sun comes up, we're working. Well, I get on the boat and I, you know, the bunks are in the wheelhouse up there with the captain. And um, I wake up and the, the, the fucking sun's up. I'm looking, I'm thinking, well, get, you know, they told me that. We're supposed to start before the sun gets up, you know. So I lean out of the bunk and I look up. And there's Captain Billy looking down at me from his captain's chair. He's got a big grin on his face. He goes, "He goes, Timmy, we're not going to haul um, stone crab traps today." He says, "Buddy, we're going to go offshore and unload a pot boat from Columbia later on tonight." 